If I had to title this one, I would give this one here that we don't need to live our life like a drowning rat. And when I first told her that, she was a little bit hesitant about putting that on her thing. I don't know if she did or not. I don't know if she put that on Facebook or not. But that's just exactly what I want to talk about this morning. I, I, I want to talk about we are born again, children of God, children of the King, blood bought, royal blood flowing through our veins. You can help me if you want to. We are winners. We're not losers. We're the head, not the tail. And I'm telling you, we need to be acting like it. We've been running around like this for the long time. We've been running around just exactly with our head down, not know what to do and not know uh, what, to, uh, what to expect or what to do. And it's time that the children of God stood up. It's time that we looked up. It's time that we acted like that we are the children of a most high God. Now, it's time that we did that. Now, you say, oh, preacher, do you mean you were just going to go back to it? No, 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 I'm not talking. I don't mean to be silly. I don't mean to be dangerous. Wear your mask and social distance. Uh, but we need to get back to serving God, and we need to get back to ministering. Our job is to tell somebody. Our job is to minister to somebody. And as a born-again children of God of the church, that's exactly what we need to do. Now, but listen, if you will go to chapter 40 in Isaiah, and if you'll turn to, to uh, uh, let's see, uh, verse 25 is where I meant to start, but there's one verse on 18 I'd like to read before I start there. Uh, I want to try to tell you today and talk to us today that how that we don't have to, that we don't have to be running around like this, and we don't have to be, uh, 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 we don't have to be, uh, losers this morning. Amen. I'll just put it to you blunt, uh, blunt this morning. I, 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 because as one man told you, you know, you get the educated preacher here, you get the uneducated preacher here. So that's what you get. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you get. But uh, the, sometimes, uh, sometimes plain talk's easy understood. Uh, but in Isaiah chapter 40, in verse number 18, it says, To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? Amen. That'll preach right there. That, that'll preach right there because I'm going to tell you what was happening here and what, what was happening here. The children of Israel were fixing to go into Babylonian captivity and they were whining and complaining and all. And he says here now, and this is God talking and right out from my little uh, 18, it says there's none like God. None like God. Well, how do you know there's none like God? Well, they had seen and they had heard and they had witnessed and they had been part of things that God had done and they had seen him work great miracles and do great things and perform things that nobody else could do and they'd seen him uh, and heard about him delivering them from uh, bondage and how he had parted the sea and how Pharaoh and his armies there was all around it, uh, in the sea and all they had heard about all this and so they knew exactly what and who God was now children I'm going to tell you something if you've been in church at all if you've been in Sunday school at all if you've uh, set through a service at all, if any kind of a preacher at all has stood or teacher has stood in front of you, you have heard the plan of salvation. If not, you should have. And so nowadays, they, some of them will not preach and talk, tell you about God and about Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation. But if you have sat in church, in a real church, and where the Spirit of God is free and there is liberty, you've heard about this God I'm talking about this morning. So that's what he's saying to them, to, to to whom then will you liken God? Who are you going to liken to? Who in the world are you going to compare? There's nothing this morning that you can compare God to. There's nothing, no power out there. You say, well, the devil's powerful. He is, but he has no match for God Almighty. He does not have the power that God has. And so we need to stop believing this stuff. And we need to believe that this most high almighty God has got the power. And he's got this thing in control this morning. Now, if you drop 
drop down to chapter uh, t- uh, 40 and verse 25, it says, To him then will you liken me, same thing, or will sh- or shall I be equal to? There's not one, says the Holy One. There's not anybody to compare me to because there's no one that's that powerful. My God, this morning, folks, uh, us as born-again children of God, we need to absolutely take this word to heart this morning. And if we're going to trust God and we're going to believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ, and we're going to believe that he did all the things that he said he did and all the things that the Bible said he did and that that witnessed by over 500 people that he come up out of the tomb on the third day. We're about to celebrate Easter here just in a few weeks and all. That he come up out of the tomb, that he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Who, what in the world, what in the world are you afraid of this morning? What in the world are you fearing this morning? morning and why in the world are we sitting here cowed down like a bunch of b- bunch of cowards and all what are we doing this morning we need to be looking toward the heavens this morning and we need to say praise the most high God when you sung the songs this morning you heard them praising God this morning well we need to praise him when the scriptures is read we need to praise him because there's nothing to compare him to we need to praise him because he has all power this morning morning. Now, go on down. Lift up your eyes on high. Lift up your, look around you this morning. Lift, I can't read for wanting to preach this morning, but lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things. Look around you and see if the devil's created these things. Look around you and see if anybody else has created the sun, the moon, the stars, this earth that circles around every single day and all. Hadn't fell off its axis since it's been put in place and I'll move one way or another we'd freeze to death or we'd burn up our God done that this morning and he done it because he has the power to do things like that so he says open up your eyes look around you look around at each other everybody's different everybody's made different but everybody as I heard somebody talking this morning Every single person in here has two things. Every single person's blood is red this morning. There's not a person in here whose blood's green. There's not a person in here that's a different color. It is blood. Same color that was shed of his blood, that red blood that was shed at Calvary when he took on a human body. That is the same color of that. And then we all have that breath of life this morning. If you don't have that breath of life, in you this morning you're dead and you are absolutely done already left this world and went out into eternity so every one of us is breathing every one of us has red blood in here look around you say well what's that got to do is that not a miracle this morning is that not something that only a higher power like God could do this morning that is absolutely a miracle from God himself Now, he says this, look around you that bringeth out the host by numbers. He calleth them all by name by the greatness of his might. In other words, again, he's talking about when he put all the earth and all the things together, he named every single thing for he is as strong in power. Not one falleth out of the sky or not one faileth. It faileth, I believe, is the word that's in here. Not one faileth. Is that faileth or fall? That's fail. Not one fails. Everyone is working just exactly like God put it in existence to work this morning. And he put it there. Now you've got some people and some scientists says, well, they did this. Or, or uh, some, uh, uh, um, some certain power done this. Or some uh, third party done this. No, it was the power of God that did this this morning. And that's what he's trying to tell the children of Israel. He said, just look around you. If you don't believe and if you don't understand, look around you at the miracles this morning. And I could go on and on. 
I could go on and on about the miracle of your body, how that your body heals itself in, in lots of ways, and how that you, you women give birth to children. I don't understand that, man. I don't understand that. But nevertheless, all of this was put together by God himself. And let me tell you, he don't mess up. He, he, he caused you to be born in this time uh, that we live in, and we don't understand why, but you are here for a reason this morning you're not a mistake you're not you're not one that was missed absolutely one big mistake you was put here for a purpose this morning for God Almighty and we need to realize that it, we are here for him and let's praise and worship him and let's uh, pray to him and let's give him all the all the praise for what he does for us now it says also it says why saith thou why do you say these things? Now, he's talking back to Jacob and Israel and talking about the children of Israel. And I'm in the King James here. But he says, Why sayest thou and speakest thou, My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from the Lord. Well, that's exactly what we act like. We act like we don't know what you're talking about, Lord, when we talk about these great miracles. But I want you to look at 28. He says, Hast thou not known? Have thou not heard? This morning, have you not known what God can do, has done, will do? Have you not known that? And have you not seen these things? Have you not witnessed these things? Have you not witnessed the miracle of God this morning? I can't get over this, Pete. I got more message to go to, but I can't even get my scripture read because some of us have seen God work miracle after miracle after miracle, and yet we still sit back and we say, well, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know what to expect. I just don't know how we're going to handle that. Bless God, handle it this way. Pray and trust God this morning. That's exactly what we get down to Isaiah. That's exactly what he tells them to do. If I ever get there in a minute, that's exactly what he tells them to do. But he says here, have you not heard? Have you not uh, known that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Fainteth not. Now listen, this is in the King James Version right here. Fainteth in some of the other versions, but fainteth translated means that he don't get tired. T-I-R-E-D. I'm going to tell you something. i never seen the like of people tired and weary because the next line says neither is he weary. i never seen the like of people tired and weary in my life. i never seen the uh, like of people in the last nine and a half months that have absolutely sat back and said, I'm so tired of this COVID-19. I'm so tired, preacher, of being cooped up in my house. I'm so tired of worrying about this thing. I'm so tired of worrying about what it could do. I'm so worried about what it has done. Listen to me this morning. He says, listen, I don't care whoever you get that gets tired and you get weary. He does not. God himself does not get tired and weary this morning. Now what you say, well I do. Yeah, I do. Yes, but he gives us grace and mercy and he gives us power to overcome. He certainly does. And if you're a born again child of God, you're one of his this morning. That's why he tells you up here to look around you. Have you not heard? Do you not know what God can do? But he, he fainteth not, and neither is he weary. He's not sitting running around up in heaven right now saying, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know if we'll ever get back in church or not. I don't know whether this thing will ever pass or not. I just don't know whether we'll, the normal will never be normal again. I've heard people say that till I'm tired. No, we may not be back normal like we used to be. Things may not be normal as we think normal is but I'm going to tell you something we're going to be here Mike's been preaching on the last days and all we are going to be here if we're alive we're going to be here we're going to be servants of the most high God until he splits the eastern sky to come get the church we're going to be here in some form or some fashion whether it be normal or not normal to you but God's people is going to be here and we're going to occupy 
occupy until he comes. And we need to occupy like we are winners this morning. We need to occupy like that we are the children of the Most High God this morning and that we, we are going to come out ahead. Now you say, well, <clears throat> preacher, you you just trying to pump me up because I'm so I, I'm so tired and I'm so weary. Yes, I am, because I've seen so many people so beat down lately. It is not even funny. I've seen so many people beat down, and all that have no hope, no hope. And I'm gonna tell you, you have hope in Jesus Christ. You have hope in Jesus Christ. I'll get to that in just a minute. He, he, talking about God, Jesus Christ, he giveth power to the faint or the tired. He gives you power. How many of you can truthfully stand here and say, and I'm going to raise my hand, but how many can truthfully say that you're tired and worry of this mess that's going on? I'm going to raise both of my hands. I can't. I got this bottle of water. But I am tired and weary of this thing going on. But I'm going to tell you, I'm serving a God. I'm serving a God that giveth power to the tired or the faint. He gives you power this morning. But you know what happens is a lot of times we'll say, well, I know that's what the Bible says, but, but, but. Ain't no buts in there. There's no but in there. The only butt that's standing in the way is that one on your behind back there. That's the only butt that's standing in the way. There's no butt in here. It doesn't say that. It says, He giveth power to the faint or the tired. He gives the power to you this morning. You got power to overcome this morning. Again, you are an overcomer. And it says, and them that have no might. In other words, you're just wore down, you're beat down, you don't know what to do. I'm trying to explain what this King James says, Michael. But have no might. Just absolutely can't go. I'm just so give in, preacher. I'm just so give out, preacher, that I can't do it. Well, if you're you like that this morning, guess what? He says those that have no might. They have no might. He increaseth your strength. He increases your strength. So, are you tired? Are you weary? Are you weak this morning? I got an answer for you. And I'm not like one of these TV preachers. I'm not going to make you buy my tapes. I'm not going to make you send me in no $100. I'm not going to make you do anything other than I'm going to tell you how to freely get your strength back. I'm going to tell you freely how that you can not be so tired and so weary. And that is trust Jesus Christ this morning. Trust him with all your heart. And he says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You say, I don't know what to do. He'll show you what to do if you'll ask him. But you know what you got to do? You got to ask him. You see, the devil don't want this preached this morning, but praise God, as long as I got enough here left here, I'm going to finish this up. I ain't ready. I ain't got to my note yet, Michael. I haven't got, you and Sammy got them notes and them outlines. I ain't got over here yet. Look here. I got three pages over here, and I ain't got over here yet because I'm excited about the message. I'm excited that God will give you strength this morning that will get some of you people that are so tired that you're ready to give up so so tired that you're just ready to throw in the towel that you're just absolutely so weary and tired that you just think about giving up I've seen people after people in this last year and so here I've seen people that just gave up they've either overdosed or had committed suicide and all I've seen people that has got so depressed because of what's going on my God this morning folks we don't have to get in that fix because we've got Jesus Christ that will absolutely strengthen you and encourage you when you get down. But oh, listen, he giveth power to them that faint or those tired and weary and them that have no might, he increases strength. Listen, even the youth 
Y-O-U-T-H-S. Listen to me, children, because the devil will want to work on you. He's worked on many of them because they're out of school. They're stuck in the house. They can't play their sports. They're stuck and their mom and dad has got them locked in a room somewhere. And that because there's nobody around, no friends or anything, so many more has committed suicide this year because of this factor. They couldn't play their sports and they couldn't be with their friends. I'm here to tell you this morning, this is for you right here. You may be there. The youth shall faint or they will get weary or get tired and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. That day is here. That day is now. You've never seen the like of young people, young men, young women and all, young people in their 30s having massive heart attacks and dying and all because of stress-related things, because they cannot cope. Or you've never seen the like of addictions and all because they cannot cope. I'm here to tell you, he says, if you're tired and you're weary, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, but praise God. Look here what old Isaiah said. But they, now I preached this message just using this one verse a few months back, talking about the great eagle, but I don't want, I, I'm not even going to get there. I want to talk to you about one word. But they that wait. Oh, God. That means you got to have some patience. And oh, my God, there ain't none of us in here got no patience. Huh? We want it now. We want it right now. But Isaiah is saying, though that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint or get tired. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That verse of Scripture right there encourages me. It encourages me, Rick, because it says there that they shall run and not be weary. In other words, they can keep on keeping on. They can keep on going this morning. Some of you that's been well, running for the Lord, some of you sat down and said, I just can't go any further. I just give up. Uh, the devil just wins. No, let me tell you something. You just need to get down on your knees and you need to ask God for strength and you need to ask him to encourage you and renew you and he'll give you the strength that you'll run again and not be be weary and you'll walk and not get tired. Amen. Now, my time's come and gone since I've done this, just read you the scripture. But I can't go without telling you where I, where I wanted to t go tell you at. And what Isaiah was trying to tell these folks, what is God is trying to tell us this morning here at New Beverly Baptist Church, and you that's listening to me this morning, watching, whatever the case might be, what he's trying to tell you is, and I've tried to real hurriedly show you here that this almighty all-knowing God has got power and gives us hope gives us H-O-P-E we have hope in a world where there's no hope in a world that there's nobody else you can have hope or trust in you say oh I hope I've got hope and trust in my friends well they'll let you down I've got hope and trust in my job well you'll get laid off or you'll get fired one of these days I can tell you from past, I've had great jobs, making great big money and all, and all of a sudden I get a phone call and they say, we don't need you anymore, don't show up tomorrow, oh, bam, amen, and I got two little kids and a wife, and that happens to me more than once, but I'm here to tell you, don't put your hope in anything of this world. Put your hope in Jesus Christ this morning. Put your hope in Him. Let me, let me, if I real hurriedly can do this, I, I've got, I've got many things, many things in here where people got tired and all. Give me, um, I started to say, give me five more minutes, but it'll take longer than that. But 
these men in the Bible, old Moses, he got tired and weary. He got tired and weary. He was over on the backside. He was back over there. He's 80 years old. He's back over there about halfway retired. And the Lord calls him up and says, hey, I need you to go down here and do a little job for me. I need you to go down here and deliver two million Jews out of Egypt. He didn't want to go. Because, listen, let me tell you, you talk about getting tired and worried. He had to listen to them people whine and complain. They fussed about everything all the way over to the promised land. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes I feel that way about church people. They whine and complain sometimes about everything going on. But you know what happened was? God delivered them into the promised land and took them out of bondage. But old Moses, I think of him, old Elijah. You remember what happened to old Elijah? He went down there and defeated 450 prophets of Baal. God sent down fire from heaven and sucked up the, 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 uh, the altars and all. I'm telling you, he was on top, sent a cloud, had sent rain down there. And then what happened? One old crazy queen said, I'm going to have you killed. He got so tore up and he got so weary and so tired, he took off a running, went to another town and sat down under, uh, in the King James, it says a juniper tree. In some of your tr translations, it says a broom tree, but whatever the that case might be, he sat down where he could rest. And he just said, Lord, Lord, I'm so tired and I'm so weary. Just kill me. After all of that, folks, I'm here to tell you, it happens to the best of us. And what I'm trying to get to you is, you may be sitting here this morning thinking, I am so tired, I am so weary, and I have no hope. Well, let me say this, there's always hope in Jesus Christ, the one I was talking about. I want to close with this, if I can. It's a gruesome story, but I want to close with this. And, and, and in a minute, you can come to music. Not now. I'm not finished quite yet. But I, I want you to know, waiting, waiting, those that wait, takes faith. Yeah. Takes faith. Some translate faith as hope. The word literally means both things. To wait in eager ex expectation for God to do something about your problem or your issue. God knows the situation you're in. I'm reading this now. He knows what to do. He knows when to do it. I don't have to panic. I don't have to give up. I don't have to take matters into my own hands. I sometimes have to do what is most difficult, which is absolutely nothing, and wait upon the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So don't get divorced. Don't quit your job. Don't give up. Don't kill yourself. Don't stop. Isaiah calls on us to just wait in hope. That God will work it out in his own way at his own time. Amen. Amen. Now, hope. Hope. And here's what I want to tell you. In 1950, and this is a gruesome story, but I want to tell you, this is true. In 1950, there was a, uh, a professor at John Hopkins University. Now, you ask me why he made this experiment. I have no idea. And I couldn't find out. But he conducted a gruesome exper experiment with rats. He first took a dozen of rats and put them in to a bucket half full of water. And when he put them in there, what, he, what the whole experiment was to see how long they could live. Well, within 15 minutes... They all died. So he did experiment number two. He did experiment number two. He takes the 
bats and he puts them in the hive full of water and about the time that they start to give up and quit swimming he gets them out of the bucket dries them off holds them next to him but then he puts them back in the bucket now remember they lasted 15 minutes that he just dropped in but those that he picked up dried off and put back in they lasted for 60 hours yep 6-0 that's 240 times longer now you say well preacher they still died yes they did but guess what happened and here's the point they had hope that somebody was going to pick them back up out of that water and dry them off again so they kept on swimming they didn't give up they didn't give in they kept on paddling and as I said 240 times longer now you say well but let, let, let me say this that hope was temporary our hope in Jesus Christ is eternal our hope is forever this morning folks we need to act like it and we need to start paddling we need to start running we need to start walking we need to start praying we need to start singing we need to start witnessing we need to start doing whatever it is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning and tell the good news that Jesus Christ is hope this morning and it's eternal hope and he'll never leave you Jesus hope is eternal listen we have a reason to keep swimming no matter how tired and weary we may be we're not rats in an experiment we're humans created baptized forgiven and loved by Jesus Christ we have a powerful God who knows how to deal with your specific situation and has the power to change things now you say I need some things changed Jesus Christ can do that I, I can't do that for you I, I'm here to tell you I can't do that for you Mike can't do that for you Sammy can't do that for you none of your deacons can do that for you none of the members can do that for you Jesus Christ can do that for you and what you need to do again is keep on keeping on keep on swimming we have a powerful God who knows how to deal with your specific situation has the power to change things he created you he knows you and not only that he hears your prayers you are not hidden from his sight through faith in Jesus you will be transported from this world when you die and the angels will carry you home now you say, preacher, why are you going to bring that up for? You just got through saying I was going to run and not grow weary. Well, let me tell you, because lots of people are sitting around and fearing death. They're fearing when that time comes. And I'm going to tell you, the older you get, the more you think about it. I don't fear it. As I told Miss Penny last night at Miss Reba's casket, I know that when my time comes that I'm just going to be transported from here to there I'm going to go through the valley of the shadow of death because of Jesus Christ so I'm not worried about it I'm not worried about it so they're going to carry me home that is a powerful thing and we need to realize that just wait instead of living the hopeless life of a rat in the depths of despair God says you can soar in peace Power like a mighty eagle and on the wings of your powerful God Jesus makes a difference in this world believe it 
And don't give up your hope in Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. So I'm here to tell you this morning, I had way more to tell you, but I've got this for somebody. Come on. I've got this for somebody this morning. Somebody is thinking about giving up. Somebody is thinking about giving in. Somebody is thinking about committing suicide. Somebody's thinking about getting a divorce. Somebody's thinking about just absolutely throwing up their hands. I don't know whether they're in here, in the parking lot, or whether they're out there. I don't know. But somebody is living like a drowning rat this morning. You're just peddling and you have no hope. And that's exactly the way you are if you don't know Jesus Christ. That's exactly the way you are. I want you to know this morning that that hope in Him, He can change any circumstance that you may be facing. He can cha change anything that may be causing you to be tired and weary this morning. He can change that. We're going to social distance with you. But if you want to come and pray this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. If you'd like to come and pray in here this morning, if you're not in here and you want to pray, you just bow your head right where you're at. And you just absolutely ask God to take over your circumstances. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, say, Lord, I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross. That he died and on that third day he arose from that tomb and he defeated death, hell, and the grave. He ascended to heaven and he's coming back one day. You can't be saved. But if your hope is all gone, if you're in despair this morning, you pray that the Lord will deliver you from that. Don't listen to the lies of Satan. Don't listen to him.